I am. There's always poo. <laughs> There's always poo in me. Whatever I do, he wants to do. Where are you going today, says Pooh. Well, that's very odd, because I was too. Let's go together, says Pooh, says he. Let's go together, says Pooh. What's twice eleven, I said to Pooh. Twice what, said Pooh to me. I think it ought to be twenty-two. Just what I think myself, said Pooh. It wasn't an easy sum to do, but that's what it is, says Pooh, says he. That's what it is, says Pooh. Let's look for dragons, I said to Pooh. Yes, let's, said Pooh to me. We crossed the river and found a few. Yes, those are dragons, all right, said Pooh. As soon as I saw their beaks, I knew. <laughs> That's what they are, said Pooh, said he. That's what they are. Let's frighten the dragons, I said to Pooh. That's right, said Pooh to me. I'm not afraid, I said to Pooh. And I held his paw and I shouted, Shoo, silly old dragons. And off they flew. I wasn't afraid, said Pooh, said he. I'm never afraid with you. So wherever I am, there's always poo, there's always poo in me. What would I do, I said to Pooh, if it wasn't for you? And Pooh said, true, it isn't much fun for one, but two can stick together, says Pooh, says he. That's how it is, says Pooh. Well, we'll return to that later. <laughs> It is very good to be here. My name, as you've heard, is Mark Tanner. I'm the Bishop of Berwick in what one of my friends uh, earlier in the week referred to as the pretend diocese of Newcastle. <laughs> You may not know that there is a Bishop of Berwick. That's because my predecessor died some time ago, by which I mean he passed away in 1572. <laughs> it is quite good to be in a job where very few people remember your predecessors. <laughs> apart from a few organists in the north of the diocese. <laughs> I'm relatively safe. I say it's good to be with you. It is good to be with you, although I confess that I'm not doing exactly what I thought I would do when I was asked to stand in for Bishop Martin. Bishop Martin and I worked together very closely on ministry division stuff, and so it was a, a joy to be asked to be his stand-in bishop in residence, as Martin Lee uh, referred to it as. Until a week ago, I thought I was simply offering you some reflections tomorrow, and then I was in a car with a friend of mine who was coming to this conference and had the program like me, and said, it's good to see that you're speaking. I'm speaking, I said. He said, yes, you're setting the scene. I rang Martin Lee. He said, just say something encouraging. I bumped into Alison, Bishop of Hull. She said, don't you dare nick any of my material. <laughs> I said, what should I say then? She said, tell them you love them and you think they're great. <laughs> Which is, of course, absolutely true. I feel the pressure to be a tigger before you this morning. And that's fine, because I have a very buoyant, powerful inner tigger. And deaneries are great. There is much to be tigger-like about. I think about our recent mission in Newcastle Diocese. I think about the deaneries, not all of them, but the deaneries that absolutely came alive as we were imaginatively seeking ways to share the good news of Christ. I can hear myself echoing. That's very, very disconcerting. I think about the support that I myself have received over the years through deanery chapters and the amount of contribution to clergy well-being that comes through them. I think about the imagination that rises up that we see even around the diocese of Newcastle, the very northernmost deanery in the country, Norham, has come up with a fantastic bottom-up lay-led scheme of worship leaders sustaining ministry in the deepest rural part of this nation. There is much to be Tigger about. But Tigger alone will not do if we are simply to be honest about our deaneries. For if Tigger has a voice, Eeyore must have a voice too. There are enormous challenges. And I would argue in a brief Tanner version of history that this goes right the way back throughout the history of deaneries. You may not know about me, but I am by original discipline a mathematician. Contrary to popular belief, mathematicians do not play with numbers. We spot patterns. That's how we analyze the world. And so it has irritated me for years that whilst we have deacons, priests, and bishops, or perhaps deacons, priests, and bishops, and archdeacons and archbishops, there are no archpriests. What's happened to the archpriests? Well, those of you who are Anglican nerds may know that's not quite right. There is actually one archpriest in the church 
edge of England, at Hackham in Devon, which is probably pronounced differently, but it's so far away from civilization, I have no idea how to say it. <laughs> to reverse the joke, which is so often used about Northumberland. In 1st of April 1913, this archly presbyteral post was continued by an act of the king, uh, who gave him authority to sit beside the bishop and acknowledge no authority below the Archbishop of Canterbury. And that's the problem with archpriests. Until the 1540s, we had them, and they were very powerful local figures, but they threatened the bishops. So in my kind of sketch version of history, the bishops and the archdeacons ganged up on the archpriests and got rid of them because they were too close to the people and had too much power. The bishop nicked the power and the archdeacon nicked the administrative authority. <laughs> Are we surprised that we struggle with deaneries at times? Deaneries themselves were not reintroduced until the Bishop of Norwich revived them in 1836 and they were only established in law in 1874 by the Archdeaconeries and Rural Deaneries Act. And that's not long enough for the Church of England <laughs> actually to have it in our understanding of identity. Imagine a bishop without a, a diocese without a bishop, and that's really hard. Imagine the Church of England without parishes, and that's really hard. Imagine in practice the Church of England without deaneries, and whilst we struggle, I would argue that it's perhaps less of a struggle. Just as my friend can jest that a diocese which was created in 1882 is merely a pretend diocese, so I want to argue in our polity, in other words, our way of organizing, organizing ourselves. Deaneries have a confused nature and identity, and yet we cannot do without them because they are so profoundly useful. They go right the way back to when England was organized into hundreds, that area of land which could raise a hundred soldiers. Each hundred was divided into 10 tithings, where tax would be collected. Over 10 tithings, you had a decanus from the Latin for 10. That's where we get dean from. In our very English psyche, we have this concept of a human-sized bit of organization which enables us to genuinely be in contact with one another. So whilst we struggle for function, for polity, and for identity in our deaneries, I would argue that we know deep in our souls that they are essential. And where we see them being imaginative, being bottom-up, and outward-looking, they are among the most healthy parts of the Church of England. That really matters. Imagination suffers in a church which is struggling for survival, which the statistics would suggest that we are even if we might not yet have fully recognized it. Where we are a church which is bottom up, we find ourselves with life which is constantly being renewed as we are seeing in the example I gave from Norham Deanery earlier. And where we are a church which is outward looking, we are healthy and that's a challenge in a church where too often what we really want to do is pretend to be Victorian and gaze at our own navels even though we are not. Jesus, if you remember, told a story about a shepherd who had a hundred sheep, and one morning he went down to the fold and noticed he had lost 99 of them. But the shepherd, being a wise shepherd, remembered what his mother had said to him in the cradle, my son, whilst you still have one sheep, you are still a shepherd. And so the shepherd stayed with the one sheep and was secure in his identity. <laughs> My sheepy friends, <laughs> it is no good staying in the halt's fold by yourself and bleating that the shepherd is not with you. If we want to discover the identity of who we are called to be as Church of England as deaneries within it, we need to get where the shepherd is. And that's why the theme and topic of this conference is so important. So am I Eeyore? Well, no, I can make jokes about it, but actually I'm not. We live in a changing world, and I don't have time to talk this through, but a world which is changing in many ways, not least that first observation, moving from community to network. We live in a world where imagination gets more important, not less. Whereas well, Bishop Adrian said last night, we need to be those who offer an impossible hope, who imagine a different reality. We live in a world where we need to tell stories. We live in a world where relationship is more key than arguably it has ever been. We live in a world which uh, revolves around network. And I have to say to you, I think deaneries can be one of the key parts of the answer to how we move forward, reimagining what it is to be the Church of England, if we are willing to do it. Dioceses and parishes are too often caught up with questions of money. Deaneries are places, in my experience, where imagination can happen and where it will almost all be welcomed. 
Now is the time for the deanery. So what of this time? Well, I've come to the conclusion that I'm called neither to be Tigger nor Eeyore for you this weekend, but rather perhaps to sit next to my little friend, Anne.